Choosing Love by Ginny Rules 27 Chapter 56 Persephone shook her head as she looked at herself in the mirror a couple of weeks after Mal's private wedding. Both Belle and Hera had said that she had been practically glowing when she talked to them at the reception. She had dismissed it as just compliments for the mother of the bride. She was a goddess after all. They glowed almost all the time unless they were on the aisle. And making assumptions like that at Mal's wedding was just rude. Private wedding or not, all the attention should have been on Mal as the bride. Besides, there was no way she was pregnant. The last time she was pregnant, Hades hadn't been able to keep his hands off of her for about two months before she found out. Sure, they were still affectionate. Okay, maybe passionate was probably the better word to use. Actually, there were some weeks now that Hades was able to come back and forth that they were like, as the mortals would say, jackrabbits. I... I can't be pregnant again, Persephone thought as she studied herself in the mirror. I mean, at least this time there'd been no back and forth. I wouldn't have to leave the kids for six months, since Hades built us a house in the woods in Oridon, close to the portal, so he'd have ease for getting back and forth to the underworld and his restaurant. She shook her head again. What was she doing? She was acting as if it was a done deal. That she was definitely pregnant. The glow could have just been her being excited for Mal's wedding, from the pride of being able to see her daughter walk down the aisle with her father. Besides, I haven't been nauseous once. Persephone thought again as she got up to head down the stairs. Though, as she did so, she accidentally knocked a few items off of her dresser. Stuff? I'm okay, Hades. Persephone called back as Hades hurried up to her, his long legs allowing him to take the stairs two at a time. Persephone smiled as she saw her husband, the big bad lord of the dead, watching her in anticipation, as if she had somehow gotten hurt and didn't know it. Honestly, Hades, you're acting like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. I just knocked over a few odds and ends. Right, right. Persephone sighed and turned to look at him. He looked distracted, which was rare for Hades. He may have not have been the best at holding back his emotions at times, but he was usually always focused to some degree. In fact, the last time Persephone could remember Hades being distracted was back during the time when Maleficent had her talons on Mal. What is it, Hades? Persephone asked, holding back a sigh. Honestly, if my mother said anything to him, though she's been a lot better now, granted Mal still hasn't talked to her because of the whole hating Hades thing, and Hattie wasn't the warmest toward her either, now that I think about it. Though that's changed since he was able to use Olympus as a sanctuary back during the... the attempted coup. It's just... back up Marley's wedding reception of the sunspot. I was talking to Belle, and she might have mentioned that you were glowing. Yeah, she mentioned that too when I was talking to her. Persephone nodded as she turned to pick up the items she had knocked over. Then again, she was probably distracted by the presence of her daughter. After all, we're God's Hades. We always glow. So that's what I thought too. But then Zeus mentioned something to me. Hades said and pulled something out of his pocket. So I... I talked to your sister. You did what? I didn't ask to look in her big book of babies or anything. Hades said quickly, as if drawing it out would wind up having him turned into a mint plant. I just asked her about the glowing thing and the fact that you've been more tired than you've normally been and a bit more clumsy and she sent me... Persephone looked down to see a familiar-looking box in Hades' hands. Hades, is that a pregnancy test? Considering it's supposedly the same one she sent you when you were pregnant with Hardy, I think you know it's a pregnancy test stuff. Hades said, gently cupping her cheek with his hand. It couldn't hurt to take it, could it? 
I mean, like you said, we're gods. So glowing and being tired and clumsy, it's not a lot of things that can't be attributed to. Persephone sighed and leaned into his touch. Hades, can we really do this? Again, I mean. What? Be parents? Zeus has done it a hundred times over, it seems, and he didn't even have to deal with the isle. Hades chuckled. It... It can't hurt to check on it, can it? And if I'm wrong, I'll do the dishes for a week. Make it a month and you've got yourself a deal. Persephone said with a chuckle as she took the box from Hades' hands. She knew he'd have it be a boatload easier in Auradon, since they were actually able to have a dishwasher here. Probably one of the best things about Auradon. Well, that and being able to be with her kids and husband. Now, I love you, but you're not going to be present for this part. I may not be in the bathroom with you, but I'll be here when you come out with the results. Hades said as he sat down on their bed. Persephone gave him a small smile, which Hades returned, as the door to their bathroom shut. Hades sighed as he leaned back on the bed, his head leaning back against the fireproof pillowcases Evie had somehow developed. Maybe it was a good thing the evil queen was into alchemy as well as her appearance. It allowed Evie the chance to develop new fabrics that wouldn't normally exist. Hey, you didn't create fabric for withstanding a dragon transformation by happenstance, you know. Oh, kid. Another sunspot, he thought. One who would only know the joy of Auradon. Who wouldn't know the pain of the isle. No. When they're old enough, they can come help out at the restaurant if they want. I don't want them to not know where their siblings came from. What made Mal and Haddy the way that they are. I won't have my eldest resenting my youngest for something they couldn't control. But I won't have my youngest not being able to understand their siblings. There was a small part of him that kind of disliked the fact he wouldn't be raising this kid in the underworld like he had Mal and Haddy. Sure, they'd still have access to it and their home in Oridon was a lot more child-friendly than the underworld was. Sure, Haddy had a room here in the house in Oridon, and so did Mal, Adam, Jay and Harry. In fact, there were plenty of guest rooms in case any of the VKs came to Oridon and needed a mini taste of the isle. But the underworld was their home. It was where Haddy learnt to walk. Where Mal learnt how to use a can of spray paint for the first time. It was where their family grew with Uma and then Harry and Jay getting their own rooms when they needed them. He could make the colours more neutral and earth tones in the new house, but it wasn't the same as the cavernous rock walls of the underworld. And yet, it was more cosy, more inviting. He could see Hattie having his friends over here for study groups, and Hades potentially poaching them for taste testers. You can make new memories though, he thought with a smile. Your son or daughter can enjoy all of Oridon has to offer. Oh, gods, what if they're twins? After all, Zeus had Apollo and Artemis. Hades? Persephone said, her voice soft, yet loud enough to prevent the spiral of panic Hades was about to go down. You got the results? Hades asked as he sat up. Persephone nodded. It was the same test Alethius sent me when I was pregnant with Hattie. It may look like a mortal test, but the results are much faster. And? Hades asked as he went to go and stand by his wife. What's the result? We're going to have a baby, Persephone said, smiling slightly as she saw Hades grin from ear to ear. That's great stuff! You... You mean that? You're genuinely happy about this? Hades paused and tilted his head. Why wouldn't I be, Persephone? Yeah, if... If I was still trapped on the isle, I'd have some reservations, just based on everything that happened with Mal when we were both on the isle. But I'm not. I can come back and forth with ease now. We'll be a team. And you won't have to say goodbye to the little sprout every six months. Persephone frowned. Won't... Won't I still need to go to the underworld? We had an agreement, Hades. So you go once or twice to give the little sunspots a snow day. 
Hades said, waving his hand around as if chasing off a bothersome fly. Or give them a nice cold front. I heard Mal once say that crisp autumn days are supposedly enjoyable. You know as well as I that our daughter prefers the scorching days of summer to anything else. Persephone said, raising an eyebrow. Hades chuckled. To borrow words you once spoke to Zeus. We had an agreement with a king who's no longer in power. Our daughter is now the queen in all but officially. I think it's time we rewrite that agreement to something a bit more favourable to us. What do you mean? Like, no separation until all our children are of age, if you don't have to go to the underworld for six months. We have another godling on the way after all. They should go to know their mother every step of the way. Persephone smiled as she rested her head on Hades' shoulder. I think being an Auradon has softened you, Hades. Hey, I know I'm the big, bad, scary lord of the underworld, but I'm also someone who's happily in love with you, Hades said as he held her close to him. The six months without you were some of the worst, because there was always the doubt in the back of my mind that you... you'd choose to stay. Persephone looked up at him in shock, resting her hand on his cheek. Hey, hey, listen to me, Hades. You are my husband. You are the man I love. I would loathe to be parted from you the same way I was loathe to be parted from our children for six months. The best part of the six months was the day I returned to the underworld. For as much as I love my mother and my family on Olympus, I love you more. My mother might claim she never wanted me to live in a sunless world, but she doesn't need to worry about that. For as long as I'm around you, I have my fill of sunlight. Hades smiled and gently kissed the top of her head. You know, Mal told me that she wanted what we have. She did? Yeah, it was when you were here in Oridon, and there was that horrible stampede at the food barge. Apparently, one of Mal's crew had a sister who got caught up in it, and she asked if she could take the little Sunspot to see the girl. Is Sunspot your go-to nickname? The kid was under 15, Steph. And even if he wasn't, he was mourning his sister. I'm not about to insult him, even if it's in the past. Persephone smiled and kissed Hades on the cheek. How did I get such a sweet husband? Just locked out, I guess. Hades chuckled. So, you ready to tell our kids that they're about to outnumber us? Now, now, there's no need to be so dramatic. Persephone shook her head, but she couldn't help but chuckle. You know, at some point you'll be having a similar conversation with Hattie, you know. About him wanting what you and I have? Not until he's twenty. After all, that's when we agreed he should start dating. Dear, that's when you agreed he should start dating. Neither had he or I agreed to that ridiculous agreement, and you know it. Hades frowned and Persephone sighed. Hades, I know you don't want him to grow up too fast. I want the same thing, she said, gently cupping his cheek once more. But he's safe, here in Oridon. He's got Mal and his friends... Not to mention, we're just a thought away from if he truly needs us. Children have to be free to live their own lives sometimes. Did you just steal that from that crab that the deranged chef of Poseidon's grandson-in-law wants to kill? Hey, sometimes the sea life are quite wise. Even when they're sucking up to your nephew by marriage. Persephone chuckled before squealing slightly as Hades pulled her into a hug. A baby... They were going to have a baby! It was, in all honesty, hard to believe. And yet, Persephone couldn't wait to see what would happen next. Hold on, Persephone said. Did you just call our kid a sprout? Hades chuckled. Caught on to that, didn't you? I'm not comfortable calling our kid an it. And sprout ties to you, Steph. You're the goddess of vegetation, after all. And plants sprout when they're born, don't they? 
Persephone chuckled. <laughs> that they do, Hades. That they do. But you don't have to call our child that if you don't want. I'm just surprised you didn't go with Pup. You know, they're your kid too, and the Cerberus is kind of quintessential to your brand. Eh, I've got two pups, Hades said. I think I can handle having a sprout too. Speaking of our pups, we should tell them, don't you think? Persephone said, or do you want to stay in for the night? Hades chuckled. I vote staying in for the night. We can tell them in the morning. Besides, I think we should get to celebrate just the two of us. Oh, and what did you have in mind? Persephone chuckled as Hades closed the door to the bedroom. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Ah, they're gonna have another kid. Mal might get her little sister, or Hedy might get his own little brother. Oh, that's so sweet. And the fact that he's such an attentive husband. I mean, out of the big three in pretty much every iteration, Hades is the go-to, isn't he, for what we see today as a standards for masculinity. I always thought that Zeus sleeping around, along with Poseidon at the same time, was the whole thing like their kings and the expression of kingly power was the ability to impregnate as many as they wanted and like it was basically the greek gods aren't what's good the idea of gods being good is a christian thing the gods are what is real to the ancient greeks both the good and the bad of reality they are emblematic of that that's what i found from my studies anyway you guys know the drill like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, guys on non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.